do good. You look, look at yourself. You don't do anything. You, you, you're nothing. I am good. When you realize you cannot love like God loves consistently, there is no room for pride. It's not I that loves my husband. It's God in me that loves my husband. And I pray that God will grow bigger and bigger in his ability to enlarge my heart, my mind, my will, bring the strongholds, the resistance. And tomorrow we'll build on all of this so God can flow freely with his eternal love from ever in the past to ever in the future toward this man. Do I have a part? Only to agree. Only to agree. And all the glory is to him. I'm not better than him. Another way to express it, I'm going to take the initiative and ask forgiveness and be tender even if he or she rejects me. Can we say those things? Humanly speaking, no. But when we are moved by God's spirit, what a difference. I'm going to live with the spirit of forgiveness in my heart and let the love of God flow to everybody, especially those who do not treat me well. Wow. To really walk this way, only when God leads our lives. The motivation of the selfish love. What moves selfish love? To satisfy and please who? Me, 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 always me. We give love to receive love. And we don't give love in order to manipulate or punish. Tell me if this is not the way it goes in the world. Tell me if this is not the way that goes in the movies and all the things that we see around us. This is the way it is. And we call this drama. Okay, what, what is the motivation of the self-giving love? Motivation is a profound gratitude for God's love, God's forgiveness, and God's grace. He is so big toward us. He has healed us. He has taken us from the pit. How can we not let him guide our lives now? And it's also a profound realization that we were created, as we were talking at the beginning, in the image of God to love this way. And that we are dishonoring God by having lost that, that ability. The world cannot know how wonderful God is until we allow God to be restored in us. And they can begin to see little by little, more and more, from glory to glory. Wow. So that's how God is. I want what you have. I desire more of that too. An, inten an intense desire to love others as God loves. And that's building up in us, building up. And it's something that we cannot explain. It's something that grows. It's an incredible, wonderful experience to feel that love inside our hearts. So the consequences, and I wish we had more time, but we'll have to just go through this quick. Consequences of the selfish love. Temporary satisfaction and happiness. Don't tell me that Selfishness does not bring some satisfaction and happiness. The world is filled with happiness that is brought by selfishness. Yes. Just, just take a parent when the, when the little child says, Mommy, 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 I just want it, I want it, I want it, whatever it is. No, you cannot have it, you cannot have it. Oh, and they look around, the parents do, and they are around other people. Oh, you know, I was not loved very well when I was a child. And, and so I give everything to my kid here, sweetheart, here, take, take. Wow! And we think that is love, temporary satisfaction and happiness. And what we have done, we are feeding a monster. Because pretty soon the little child will come back and say, Mommy, 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 I want it, I want it, I want it! And then we get married. And we have men and women that are, I want it, I want it my way. You know, give me, give me. No, I don't give you, give me. A and it's a drama, an, incre uh, an increasing drama since we are little children of temporary satisfaction and happiness. And we call giving love. Next one, insecurity and emotional restlessness. Oh, so many people that are filled with 
anxieties of all kinds, that restlessness, emotional restlessness, all the time. Uh, loneliness, emptiness. Most people live with crowds around them and they feel alone. This is the way it is. We develop defense mechanisms in order to avoid pain. I won't have time to probably develop this subject, but we have a whole seminar connected to this idea of the defense mechanisms we have. And we all have some defense mechanisms. Let it, let it serve to say that when we do not love as God loves, we will become hard-hearted. We will are going to become cold. We are going to love one person and not another person. And rationalize that we are doing okay. We may be too needy for some people. Others may be too self-sufficient. I don't need anybody. And I can use everybody. There is dishonesty, confusion, lack of inner congruency. Have you seen people that act one way at work, another way in church, and another way at home? There is a discrepancies based on that lack of congruency inside. There is, no harm, there is no harmonious way of understanding the way we should live. You know, we just follow impulses, tendencies. And that is a very, very insecure life. And also we have addictions. There are so many addictions. Conflict, strife, disunity. We grow apart. There is isolation. There is divorce. And pain, and finally, what? Death. And that, that divorce is not necessarily between men and women that are married. It can be any relationship. Yeah, you, you cut off people from your life. That's a divorce. Cut off people from your life. Now, the consequences of the love, self-giving love of God, okay? This, uh, this is what happened in the life of a person that lives with this type of love in their hearts. There's joy. I did not write there happiness, because in my own heart, I see a difference between happiness and joy. I like to say that, to me, happiness depends on external factors. I have a good house, a wife that loves me and treats me the way I want. I have a lot of money. I, I'm uh, good. You know, I'm happy. Joy is an inner sense of contentment and peace and love that is stable inside me, regardless of the circumstances around me. I may be going through trials, difficulties, accusations, whatever it is. But inside there is peace and there is joy. Now that's a gift from God. Okay? There is contentment, there is peace even in the midst of conflict. There is courage and patience. Courage and patience. We accept pain as part of the process to learn how to love. If you don't accept pain, you will never really learn how to love. Because to really learn how to love, we need to be willing to accept the pain that God allows in our lives. I'm not talking about the pain that we seek with our rebellious ways of living. I'm not talking about that pain. I'm talking about the pain that God allows in the life of his children to purify us, to transform us. That there is always going to be a certain degree of pain. And there is a lot of pain that is not allowed by God per se, but it happened because Adam gave permission to the devil to rule in this world. There is so much injustice, abuse of children, wars, killing, hate, famines. Satan has been the ruler of this earth, and those are the symptoms of his presence. But how beautiful it is to know that God is entering into this fallen world to care for one another, to love, to restore himself in us and through us to bless others. And those that hate God learn to understand he didn't do it. He didn't do it. 